and what our numbers have shown. And just to give you an example, so from pre-COVID to basically before March to the end of June, we have had growth of 270%. What that is telling us and our hypothesis is that mission and cause and impact of what you purchase truly matters in today's society. You're listening to Retail Remix, your inside access to candid conversations with the people shaping retail's future. Here's your host, Alicia Esposito. Hey everyone, and welcome to another week of the pod. This week, I sit down with Matthew Allen, who is the Chief Experience Officer of Olivella. Now, Olivella is very interesting in and of itself because it's a luxury brand, but it also has a very strong philanthropic tie-in. They give a portion of all sales to different organizations, different philanthropic partners. So this notion of charitable giving and giving back is ever-present in everything they do. But at the same time, they're trying to engage a very specific audience with very unique digital needs in these times. So Matthew and I kind of peel back the layers into all things experience, all the different channels, tools, and tactics, and most of all, what the brand has seen success with in light of COVID-19 and how their priorities are changing and evolving as we start to think ahead, start to think ahead into holiday time and maybe even beyond. Matthew is clearly very passionate about what he does and has some great tips and takeaways, I think, for any brand leader that is trying to create more meaningful interactions with their audience. So with that, meet Matthew. Matthew, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. It's great to have you on the pod. Alicia, thank you for having me. Great to be here. So to uh, start off our conversation, let's go a little bit bigger. Why don't you share a little bit about Olivella, your goals as a brand, and the audience that you're uh, attempting to serve and engage? Well, fantastic. Olivella, we are a digitally native, mission-based retail platform where we operate at what we like to say the intersection of style and philanthropy. And so we are a fashion website where we sell everything from ready-to-wear to beauty, even to home accessories. But our core differentiator and our key business model is that we donate 20% of the proceeds of every single purchase every single day to the causes that our customers care about most. You could envision a net a or Farfetch or a Matches Fashion with philanthropy built in. And so we started with Girls Education in 2017, which was inspired by our founder, Stacey Boyd, meeting Malala Yousafzai the Nobel Laureate. And over the three years, as we have gotten to know our customers, we've learned that they are passionate about many causes, not just girls' education, which is at the heart of Olivella. And what we have done is we've expanded what we call pillars of what type of causes we have. So now we have girls' education nonprofits, we have women's empowerment, climate action, health services, just to name a few. And from a customer perspective, I would say it's quite broad. So we would start, I would say, with the fashion-forward millennial. So someone who is very into fashion or their own style, looking maybe to come into Olibella at a lower price point. And then we go up to what I would call the style-conscious luxury shopper. And this is probably the woman in her 40s and 50s, someone who's made it a little bit more in her career, has a little bit more money and looking at more of our luxury products. Oh, that's great. And there's definitely been some interesting evolution in the luxury space, the role of purpose and philanthropy in shopping. And and I definitely do want to get into that. But before we do, I feel like there are so many layers, so many outside factors that are influencing retail. And I'm sure your business right now. But before we get into that, I do want to dig a little bit deeper into your role, because your role technically, officially, is Chief Experience Officer. And I I feel like the interesting things about titles is that depending on the company, it could mean different things. So in your world, what exactly do you do? What are your 
priorities, what's really top of mind for you on a day-to-day basis for the Olivella brand? Yeah, it's definitely a fun title. Love Chief Experience Officer. And it's actually quite broad. And to your point, I think it means different things at different companies. But here at Olivella, the CX, as the CXO, I am responsible for basically the entire life cycle of how our customers, and even more importantly, our potential customers, interact, engage, and connect with our brand, no matter where they are or what channel they're in. So be it at home, be it out of home, be it at work, in our retail stores, on their mobile device, on our flagship website, on a different app where they're getting an ad served by us, at an event, our PR and online and offline media, and podcasts like this. So really wanting to make sure that um, customers and potential customers are getting the top-notch and best on-brand experience across all of these platforms where they actually shop and learn and get educated about products. Great. So you really truly have that all-encompassing role. You help guide all forms of customer interactions with the brand. So my next question is probably going to be very interesting and multi-layered. And and it's top of mind for everyone right now. And and that's, you know, the role of COVID. So my question for you is, because your day-to-day encompasses so many different channels from in-person to digital events to apps, how has your role and your day-to-day been impacted by the current situation? And have there been any ripple effects for the Olivella business as a whole? Because I know we're, we're having a lot of conversations with retailers right now around immediate pivots, but also more long-term strategic shifts as a result of the current crisis. So I guess there are kind of two questions there. So immediate impact for your role and also how that trickles up to the brand as a whole. Yeah, it's a great question. There are actually so many ways to answer it. I'm sure as everyone you're talking to, we've all had to pivot and have been impacted in some way. Specifically, I think that the biggest way in which my role has been impacted and that we were sort of set up for success is how do we continue to, and even more so, engage with our customer and our potential customers without the ability to go to some of our stores, but since we are digitally native, most of them come to our site, and taking advantage or leveraging the fact that people are at home so much, right, starting in March and quarantining. So one of the biggest things we did is we launched and developed a new platform called Olivella IRL in real life, which we created as a one-stop destination for all things beauty, fashion, education, and fun. My focus and my team's focus has been on creating these virtual digital experiences to engage and build our customer loyalty. And so this has been super fun, actually, and we've been able to really innovate. And something that has become a long-term strategy for us has been things like creating experiences from one-on-one beauty consultations with our beauty experts to doing working from home videos where our own staff would be at home and they would work with some of the products they love and do an Instagram video about how they're surviving working from home. We've partnered with some of our great brands like Bala Bangles and have conducted workout classes. I personally did a game night using some of our really fun games and expanded all the way to really product-focused experiences. For example, we sell a la Pell items, their, their shoes and wallets hand-painted. And so we offered free customization and monogramming through this IRL experience. We've also had Q&A with some of our amazing designers. And as we came into sort of Black Lives Matters, we really brought to life and brought to the forefront some of our Black designers and had Q&A. And so it has been really interesting and a really big focus and shift for me on how do we create this platform across our own site, leveraging Instagram, Facebook, all the channels out there to make sure that we remain engaged with our customers and we are offering something unique that many people are not. I love that whole premise. So you you essentially created a destination or content hub that basically provides consumers with everything they need to have a great experience with your brand. 
And I do want to dig a little bit deeper into all those great components that you talked about from social to services and, and the value and impact of those. But I do have a question around the team impact. So this notion of agility really came to the forefront, I I think, for retailers, especially for those who had stores, had to shut down, had to largely pivot to digital. But I think across the board, agility has really been a hot topic. A lot of companies changing the way they collaborate, the way they test and learn ideas. So I guess my follow-up question for you is, because you did did mention the, the need to pivot to an extent Is this notion of collaboration with your team, has that always been a present way of of how your team works? Was that something that had to be learned and more integrated given the ever-changing nature of the situation? Well, I'd love to get a feel for how this mindset, this agile mindset and more collaborative mindset may be affecting you personally and also your team as a whole. Yeah, great question. I, I would say as a small company, right? You have to be agile and you have to be able to pivot. And we've always at Olivella prided ourselves on the ability of pivot. However, with COVID, it really made this at an exponential level. And we have challenged and we've been challenged and had to challenge ourselves to pivot even more than we ever have. And so the collaboration was there, but we've had to up the collaboration between teams And I would say one of the biggest collaborations is with our nonprofits and one way that we pivoted. And when you were asking this question, one example that came to mind was how quickly we were able to pivot to benefit those most impacted by COVID. The example is, as I mentioned earlier, we partner with many nonprofits because we donate 20% of our proceeds of every purchase. And so within three days of the first school closures happening in March, our partnership team partnered with Save the Children and No Kid Hungry, where we turned over our site and every purchase made on our site, we donated the 20% of proceeds to provide meals and essential supplies to children who have been impacted by these COVID-related school closures. So I'm not sure how much everyone knows out there, but millions of children in this country rely on schools and their school cafeteria for one meal or multiple meals a day. So when schools closed and based on our DNA, we're like, how can we help given our model? And as of yesterday, we've actually donated over 108,000 meals due to this pivot to working with Save the Children and No Kid Hungry. So to me, that's the most exciting pivot because not only did it have a really positive business impact, but we actually had a societal impact and proved that our mission and core of our company does work. And there really is something substantial there. Yeah, that's really fantastic. So in the nature or in the essence of our conversation right now around pivoting, I do want to jump and dig a little bit deeper into this philanthropic DNA of your company and its impact. Because I mentioned earlier, the reason why I really wanted to speak with you, Matthew, is because I'm personally noting this really interesting evolution of luxury, what it means, the luxury consumer, and what they really look for in terms of the brands that they shop from and ultimately are loyal to. So you mentioned your your recent partnerships, how this partnership model has evolved since the company's inception. But I'm curious about the ultimate role of giving back and social responsibility in your business. And I guess in the end, you know, your relationships with your customers. I mean, is this really a strong connecting point, a driver of loyalty among your customer base? And what are you really finding in terms of the social impact of these brand to consumer relationships right now? Is this really coming to the forefront, I guess, is really the question. Yeah, and it's a great question and a question we love to get asked because this is sort of what our business was built on three years ago. Conscious consumerism, I think, is a hot term these days, but we truly believe in it. And when it comes to luxury there, I have a few saying that I've been talking about recently, but not only conscious consumerism, but quality over quantity. As people have been forced to stay home, they're realizing that there's clutter in their home and maybe they don't need all of this stuff. And what's more important is to have quality items versus quantity of items. 
which leads to an increase in the desire of luxury goods, not needing to collect so much stuff that you're spending all this time at home, but feel much more comfortable in a really luxe cashmere sweater that you could wear numerous times instead of a less luxury item. So we're seeing that shift. But the bigger shift, which I really love, is about conscious consumerism and people being much more conscious and cognizant of the impact that their purchase is having. And when I use the word impact, this could be an impact in so many ways. So whether it be an impact on the environment, is the company using ethically sourced materials? How are they treating their workers? Are we supporting Black-owned businesses? Or if I buy this product, they're going to give back to a cause that means something to me. And what we have seen and what our numbers have shown, and just to give you an example, so from pre-COVID, so basically before March, to the end of June, we have had growth of 270%. Wow. What that is telling us, and our hypothesis, is that mission and cause and impact of what you purchase truly matters in today's society. Wow, that is truly impressive. I mean, I know I personally have seen the data, consumers saying they want to buy from brands that more closely align with their values, the causes and issues that they stand for, both political, social, and I guess also environmental. But there's always that, oh, well, are they just saying that? Or, you know, are they doing something completely different? So those numbers, I think, really validate that trend, which is really enlightening to hear. And I love your point around, I guess, consumers being more conscious of all of the layers that play into their buying decisions, right? So it's not just click the button, add to cart and check out and, you know, that's it, no big deal. And they want it fast. They want it easy too, right? But they they know now, I think more than ever, okay, I want same day shipping. So someone in the warehouse is going to have to have to pick that product and they may or may not have good working conditions, especially in this current situation. They're going to have to use resources on the company side, get trucks to deliver the product that may or may not align with my beliefs that, you know, we should minimize waste in in our carbon footprint, you know, so they're starting to understand all of those different layers and nuances that go into their purchase decisions, which I think is really impactful and is really important, I think, for all of the retail executives listening to our conversation right now. But digging a little bit deeper into the essence, the mindset of your two core consumers that you defined for us earlier. Is there anything else that you've learned about them, especially in recent weeks or or months? Any new behaviors, preferences that will ultimately shape the brand and and how you go about engaging with them? Yeah, I would say, and sort of similar to, to what we just spoke about, I would say what we're seeing is people do really care about the impact of their purchase. So, and that they can care about it in different ways. And you just spoke about numerous types, right? Like you mentioned corporate footprints and what's the impact that their purchase is going to have on the environment. And so what we see and across different sectors, and it doesn't have to be across age or geography or socioeconomic status, but people do care about different things. So millennials is a huge audience that we target. And we do have price points that are very applicable to millennials while still very fashion forward. But we do know that what's on the top of their list, and many studies have shown us, is making money or being successful with a high job or owning a house is not necessarily number one anymore for millennials. But on the top three is actually giving back and having an impact on society. And so In this regard, we are leaning into our mission and leaning into our messaging. So we have always promoted, because it's at the DNA, that we are a philanthropic luxury retailer. But during COVID, we have really upped the ante in that to explain who we're really about, because it is resonating so much with consumers out there. People are spending more time at home. People are spending more time online. They're looking for quality goods. And This is who we are, and it's really authentic. So we are seeing this throughout our consumer bases, both on the millennial and the fashion-forward luxury shopper who's already buying luxury. And this is just a new destination 
to buy the same items they were buying before. And at no additional price, we donate that 20%. That's just built into our business model. And now a word from our sponsor. The retail industry is facing new uncertainties. But what if you can turn that uncertainty into opportunity? Now's the time for brands to level up and accelerate the innovative ideas that have been weighing in the balance. During the now virtual Retail Innovation Conference, get tactical tips and best practices from your peers around the big acceleration. Learn how you can create relevant and immersive digital journeys, optimize the e-commerce browsing and buying experience, support omni-channel fulfillment services, plus so much more. The two-day online experience is taking place on October 13th and 14th. And as a listener of the Retail Remix podcast, we're giving you 25% off your all-access pass when you use the code PODVIP at checkout. Just use the link in the show notes to get started. Get inspired by the brightest minds in retail and start finding clarity in the chaos. Register for the Retail Innovation Conference today. And what about all of the fantastic ways that you've been reaching and engaging with your consumers during this time. So going back to that IRL concept and the services, the social engagement, the live streaming, like all of these fun components. I mean, obviously with them comes findings and results. So, I mean, has there been anything interesting that you've uncovered in terms of their preferred ways of connecting with you or maybe the services that have a lot of weight and can extend past this initial period. I mean, I know a lot of companies are trying to bridge that physical gap, so to speak, by doing similar services, but I I can't help but feel like there's value way beyond that this current situation. So curious about what has worked well for your brand and what you guys may be doubling down on moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And so many people are doing these things, right? Because we sort of had no choice with stores being closed. You had to pivot in a way to engage. And what I would say our number one learning is customers love content. Content is queen in this world. And people really enjoy getting new information, getting new content. Second, I would say is people love having personalized service and being taken care of. And so one of our most popular offerings was when we did offer one-on-one 15-minute beauty consultations with a member of our beauty team. And we didn't build any technology, really. We just used Calendly, which is obviously an off-the-shelf digital solution. And we made appointments available, and we did paid social around it, and we promoted it to our email lists. And these appointments got filled up very, very quickly. The conversion on those was super, super high. So This was one of the first ones we did, and I would say we had a 62% conversion on buying products. Maybe it wasn't the product they came for, but since they had that one-on-one beauty consultation, they learned something, and they felt really good about themselves. And it's all about self-care, and you were stuck at home, and you wanted to feel good and look good and make sure you looked great on your Zoom conference calls. And so not only did we provide a service, but it created a new customer stream for us. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I love that you brought up the point that people at the end of the day just kind of want to be taken care of. I mean, especially in this climate, right? It's like we want some form of stability. We want relationships. We want nurturing. But I think it really goes back to the fundamentals of good retailing, right? And that really starts at the individual level and the relationship level. But I do want to go back to your point around content because I am a content person and I can talk about content all day. (laughs) I think the one thing that really stuck out to me, just like going through your website, going through that experience is the work from home edit that you guys created. I I love the concept. I love that it's, you know, curated, it ties to the current situation, you know, your customers needs. So my question for you is, was this something that your team put together on your own and just thought, oh, like this, this is kind of relevant to like what we're dealing with right now? Or was this something that your consumers and their behaviors and and their feedback said they wanted? And are there any other forms of content that have performed very well for you guys recently? Yeah. So I would say this is something that we definitely came up with internally at the beginning as people were starting to work from home more. 
And it tied back into the rollout of our IRL platform. This one of the, the first series we did on IRL was working from home. And so we're like, what could we do quickly? And the quickest thing we were able to do was get our own employees talk about something on Instagram Live that they were doing to survive working from home. So we literally had one of our apparel buyers talk about what she's wearing and comfortable while working at home. And then we had one of our beauty merchants talk about what they're doing to make sure they look amazing on their Zoom conference calls all day. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, I took some of our games we sell in our home assortment and said how I am sort of navigating through my evenings, working and playing with a lot of the games we have. And so working from home really resonated. And so many people were doing it. And a lot of us never worked from home before. Some of us have. So I think there was definitely a desire and a demand for content and sort of ideas and creativity and innovation on how to work from home and how to be creative in that way, but also what items you can use to help that. And one of the ones that was super successful were these Bala Bangles. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. They were on Shark Tank and they're these amazing bracelets you wear, but they come in half a pound, one pound, and two pound bracelets. And You basically just wear them all day and like you have a workout while you're working. And so we did a Bala Bangle workout with the founder of Bala Bangles and an influencer. And we literally cannot keep them in stock and they're really hard to find. And so every time we get a shipment in, we are selling out within hours. But it's because people are now working out from home. And here is a product that was perfect to do that. So we created content around that product to help our consumer live a better life. And once again, that term self-care just keeps on coming back, right? Like you need to be taking care of yourself and any advice or help or assistance and guidance on how to do that, I think is really in high demand right now. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think, you know, it ties back to any meaningful content experience stems from not just, you know, the high level, like who are my customers? What do they think? What do they want? What do they need? But it's looking at the individual piece of content or individual content experience. What's the utility of this? You know, how can people use it and how can people get value out of it? So it's been interesting to see that evolution because I know in in our early days of covering social media, I mean, even when Instagram first started, it was like, oh, I'm gonna take a picture of my salad. <laughs> but like, it's now it's kind of becoming it needs to be like more valuable, it needs to be more weighty. And I think that's a good thing. I think the fact that consumers are getting more savvy, they know at the end of the day, okay, this company is marketing to me, they do have stuff to sell at the end of the day, they're almost holding brands to a higher standard. And I think that'll be a good thing for the industry at large. Because to your point earlier, it does give the opportunity to innovate and stretch creative boundaries and try new things. So hopefully, if anything, this current situation will give that idea a bit more weight and validate it. And hopefully, we'll see more innovation moving forward. But before we move forward, you have mentioned a few times the role of your team, your employees in creating this content, in activating engagement among your social followers, your consumer base. I'm going to go off script here with this question. So let me know if you can answer it fully. But the interesting thing that I've been seeing in the fashion space, especially is turning employees into influencers, what you kind of referred to. So I'm wondering if you have a take on like the future of influencer marketing in and of itself, because influencer marketing is a huge space right now. Now there's an an official council around it. Do you have a take as far as how this space is going to evolve? Is there a positioning in terms of like, do you think that you guys are going to be doubling down on more like activating your employees and and your team members? Basically would love your take on, on where you think this trend in particular is going. Yeah. Like the trend is not going away. I do believe that influencer marketing is here for quite a while. And I think what we need to do is be more creative and innovative around what influencers do and make sure that they're providing a real value, which is sort of, I think, a shift, right? A lot of influencers we think about are celebrity influencers, which 
you follow them because you like them as a celebrity, because they're an actress or an actor or an athlete. I think today's influencers have to be adding a certain type of value to you and your consumers. So, for example, when we do a workout with one of our products, we are using a influencer who is in the fitness realm and has her own followers. And so we find that actually to be super successful and highly effective because they are now bringing a new conglomerate of consumers to our brand. That really obviously is the ultimate goal of working with influencers. But if you can revolve it around something that's very relevant, relevant to your brand, relevant to your product, relevant to your ethos, I think that is where we're going to be leaning. It's much more than just putting on a beautiful outfit and being famous. I think it's about having a specialty, having a skill that your consumers are interested in. And so this fact of like our Q&A series and our working from home series or our different experiences, when we do bring in an influencer, you're learning something, our customers learning something. And what we love is that we're getting access to a new customer base. So I think the trend is still here to stay. I think it's just shifting in how the value and the purpose and the use of influencers will be. Yep, I love that. And it'll definitely be interesting to see how that space evolves and what best practices are are required from a relationship building standpoint, a content standpoint. Yep, because again, it ties back to the importance of content and, and influencers play a critical role in that. So definitely an interesting space to watch. We've been talking a lot, Matthew, about digital, just given the circumstances, but your team has also had to navigate the reopening of your brick and mortar boutique in Nantucket. And we've been keeping a close eye on this process broadly for the industry, some of the complexities and and challenges that store operators have had to navigate in the process. So I'd love to hear from you what this process has looked like for your team, any challenges, and of course, lessons learned are always appreciated, so especially now. Um, So anything that has worked well for your team or or anything of that sort would, would be fantastic. Yeah. So this is a part of my team, right, where we have a brick and mortar team that focuses on our boutiques. And our flagship boutique is in Dantucket, and that is the only one that we opened this year due to COVID. There were definitely (laughs) complexities, things we've never worked with before. And when I talk about opening up Nantucket, it was really twofold. I would say the challenges and what we had to address was, one, operationally. Clearly, there were guidelines from Massachusetts, from CDC. At the top of our list was obviously keeping our team and our customers safe. So in everything we did, we had to monitor that and figure that in. And then how we operationally were going to make this store work, given these guidelines that people would feel comfortable and safe in, as well as staying up to speed with each of the phases. So One thing I always talk about in Massachusetts, one phase when we were opening, you weren't allowed to have dressing rooms. But by the time we opened, they actually let dressing rooms be opened. We just had to have a reservation system in place. So it was really important for our team to be on top of it. Literally every day, we would be reviewing and understanding what the latest guidelines are and how do we actually go about and execute these things. So everything from having masks in a store, which we've never had before, to having a hand-washing station, right, with hand sanitizer, to having the plexiglass in front of your checkout, which doesn't always feel very luxury, right? And we want to have a wonderful experience in our store. So making these things work and securing supplies when there was a long list of people trying to get supplies um, with extended shipping time. So actually, a lot of our teams, we got pretty scrappy, And we were all going around to our local stores and making sure that we each picked up hand sanitizer to make sure we had enough before our shipments came and picking up masks to make sure we had enough masks when people arrived in our store. And everything was very branded. So obviously a brand is important to anyone in the messaging. So all of the decals on the floor talking about social distancing and six feet away and the signage about the maximum capacity were all in our brand tone and voice. And that was really important to us. Which leads to the second 
sort of parallel experience or parallel component of opening the store, which was our unique experience. And so we pride ourselves on Olivella not just being a place where you shop, but actually a place where you come to have an experience. So how is our experience going to be different now in this COVID world? And so we focused very heavily on that. Some of the things that a lot of people were doing, so we do offer same-day delivery on the island, which we never did before. We implemented curbside pickup or in-store pickup. So we created an online version of the Nantucket store where you can then go on and order your items for either curbside or in-store pickup. And most excitingly and most successfully is we actually took the 10 to 11 hour in the morning and the five to six hour in the afternoon where we closed the store down and those two hours a day were reserved for one-on-one private appointments. And people can reserve any day of the week those time slots in advance where you would have the store to yourself and one store associate. So for anyone who felt uncomfortable, who wanted a private experience, who wanted a luxury experience, but also very safe, we actually created that experience for you to do naturally and to sign up very easily to do that. And so that has been really exciting and and people have really resonated to that because they just love that. A, they, people like that high touch, but they also feel really safe and secure. That's fantastic, Matthew. I, I love how you hit on both the safety requirements and those little nuts and bolts, so to speak, to help customers feel safe and, and that their health isn't at risk, but also the, the high touch components, the experiential components, for lack of a better word, because you know we, we are seeing that. And I, and I personally believe that there is going to be a strong cross-section of the two moving forward. Those are going to both be equally critical moving forward from an experience standpoint. So thank you so much for hitting on those. But I mean, to round out our conversation, again, we, we unpacked a lot. We uncovered a lot of layers to to the overall brand experience of Olivella. So thank you so much for uh, bearing with me and digging into all the details with me. But to close out, I'd love to hear... With all of this in mind, all of the different layers, all the different tactics and channels and weighing the future of the store experience and how the Nantucket location is is going to go, where are your priorities right now? I mean, I'm sure a lot of it is tracking day to day and just making sure that you're adhering to any changes, new requirements, new guidelines, but would love to get your take on short term as well as long term, right? Because we're in summertime, soon people are going to be thinking about holiday and you know where that's going. So we'd would love your take on what's top of mind for Olivella right now. We have quite a bit on our mind, both short term and long term. I think in the short term, it's really being what we've found successful, being consistent with our marketing and messaging. And I know we haven't spoken too much about marketing, but it really is important, especially with who we are and our DNA. And something we talk about every single day and in every single management meeting and team meeting, especially since COVID, is how many meals we've provided to children in need because of COVID-related school closures. What we are doubling down on in-store and online is really going out with our message and how shopping with Olivella is unique. And not only do you get our amazing assortment of products, that you would be buying anyway, and some that you might not, but it's just so amazing you need, but is that you're living truly this conscious consumerism lifestyle and that you are helping people in the world we live today and in the real situation we live today. So I would say in the short term, we are definitely focused on being consistent, being very clear with our marketing, being very clear with our messaging and being very clear with supporting the causes that are dear to our heart and those that are important right now. I think as we look forward, causes will always be near and dear to us. And I think you mentioned holiday, right? And so we're all thinking about holiday time. And as we think about holiday without giving too much away, right, we're going to take the whole Q4 and sort of have the, the thinking around holiday. And For us, the biggest day of the year, given our founding around girls' education, is International Day of the Girl, which is October 11th this year. So starting in October and then for the following months, we're going to have a different theme 
So October will be all about education. And so providing an education and how could we do that and how can you help that with your purchases. In November and Thanksgiving, it's all about what are you thankful for? And we'll be seeing tons of content and activations and our IRL and our store all revolving around these themes. And then December, the big theme of giving back. And so when we think about giving back, we think of it in two ways, right? You give back with your purchase potentially as a gift, but you are also actually providing someone a meal or sending them to school or giving them cancer treatment that they wouldn't have had without that purchase. Both of these really revolve short-term and long-term revolve around our mission, around our founding and around our DNA. That's fantastic, Matthew. Well, thank you again so much for taking the time out, for uh, digging in deep with me into all things experience. It really was wonderful to get to better understand the Olivella brand, how you guys were able to successfully pivot and create all of these great content experiences and digital services for your consumers and what you're doing now to bring that in-person experience back to life and how that DNA of philanthropy, of giving back is always ever present. It was a wonderful conversation. It was lovely meeting you. And thank you so much for taking the time today. Alicia, thank you so much for having me. It was really fantastic. And uh, thanks everyone out there for listening. If you have any comments on this episode or any follow-up questions for Matthew, please feel free to reach out to us on Twitter at our touch points. Would love to hear from you. And as always, be on the lookout for another episode from us. We'll be back next week with another candid conversation with a retail expert. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you can get those episodes on your preferred podcast player as soon as they're available. Thanks again, Matthew, for taking the time. And thanks everyone out there for listening. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Retail Remix. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on your favorite podcast player. Until next time, keep mixing it up.